Hi, what is wrong in Africa? What is really at the heart of Africa's problems? The answer might not be as easy as we would like to think, but definitely the answer is complex because Africa is a very diverse country with many leaders, many countries, different cultures, but is our difference in cultures really at the heart of our problems? I am Olivia and this is Profits and Wealth News and Opinion. And this is my opinion. What is at the heart, part of our problem in Africa is a lack of leadership. And you know how disheartening it is to see one man singing the praises of another man, another human being who just holds a title. A title of president, CEO, prime minister, whatever title it is that might impress a little man who's sucking up to a title or a country for that matter. Africa has a long history of bloodshed, losses and pain. It also has a history of victory, power and overcoming many obstacles. But what we don't need in Africa is another bad leader. And what is the leadership? Without being fancy and becoming technical about, you know, when you study business management or leadership skills, there are all these fancy terms for a leader. But all a leader is, is to do what is right for something or someone bigger than yourself. Not right as being dictated by the flavor of the month or the flavor of the day or the country who holds the most power according to you. That's not a leader. I have seen videos of even going back seven years ago where Africa praises China. What the hell a man a leader from one country stands up and praises and honoring and honors another man just because this man came bearing gifts It's disgusting, it's disheartening, it's disappointment, disappointing. And that is one of the things that is wrong with Africa. One man singing the praises of another country. I will post the video down below so that you can see what I'm talking about. If you see fit to get onto a podium, a stage, an international stage, and sing the praises of another man, you do not deserve to be a leader. A leader is bold, it requires integrity, Courage, honesty, principles, convictions. What are your convictions? If you sing the praises of another country, in this case, China, you should be ashamed of yourself. And any person who would want to vote for you must know that they are voting for the wrong man.
A leader inspires. He builds, encourages. A leader just purely by his presence in a room makes everyone else feel empowered and motivated and inspired. Not so. When you sing the praises of another man, what tell me? Tell me. What do you want to achieve? Because all of us we have an objective with when we do something. We have an end goal in mind. When we stand up and we say something, what is your end goal? What is your objective? Do you think by praising another human being just like you? Do you think that it will give you votes? Money? Power? Position? Do you think that you will impress the investors so much that they will fund your party? It's disgusting and you need to stop. You know, this is why the rest of the world don't think anything of us and we need to say it. They don't think anything of us. How can you respect a country when someone who has a position of influence in that country stands up and praises the leader of another country? As if without that country, nothing would have happened. We must fight for China. We must protect China. What rubbish is this? Are we in a war that we don't know of? That we must protect China. Did China ask for anyone's protection? Did you ever see the Chinese leader getting up on a stage and say, oh, they're saying bad things about me. Protect me. Did you ever see him doing that? Why do you feel the need to do it? Why do you think it's necessary? This is what I'm thinking. Why? You hope to rule your country. You hope to become the next president of your country. And you think by sucking up now that you are getting the powers behind you so that you can become the president for the next election. And now you want to impress the money bags. You want to impress the pockets of power. I have listened to your videos and I cannot see a single one where you tell the world what you bring to the party. What is it that you offer? What is it that you do that will make a difference? How are you going to make the lives of your countrymen better? How are you going to improve conditions in your country? What are you going to do about job employment? Job creation? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. I didn't hear any of that. You see, and that is you represent everything. Thing that is wrong with our continent at the moment. Empty leaders. Bat packers. Butt kisses. We see it here in South Africa as well. Let's see which way the wind is blowing and then I get onto a podium and I talk about that and I support it. We are devoid of leadership. If you are in Africa right now and you have a leader that you are proud of, then you are a very fortunate person. The countries that come to mind here, Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda, when I look at these countries, things are not perfect, they're not ideal, no country is perfect, all countries have the issues, 
but at least when a leader says the right things, when a leader does the right things, not for the outside world to see, but for the sake of his country. We don't have to agree with every single African leader. Differences are good. Because I also don't trust someone who agrees with everything that you say that's unhealthy. And it's pitiful. You need someone to dis or can disagree with you. So that you can exchange ideas. So that you can expand your vision and look at things from a different perspective. African leaders, how long are you going to keep quiet? And by the way, we have some leaders who are vocal. This is not addressed to all of them. But I'm speaking to those ones who now wants to serve a different master. You know what your problem is? You love money too much and you're not even in government. You know where this is heading? If ever people vote you in, you will be chowing money. You know why I can say this? We have training in our own country to observe people like you. What you are doing now, We've seen it happening in South Africa over and over again. And we still see it happening. You know what is disgusting? Is when you are in a position of power. Where it's you have the keys in your hands to change. To create positive change. But what do you do? Instead of coming up with policies, you kowtow to the Chinese. And do they want it from you? No. Do they respect you anymore for it? No. Because how do I know? If I were in a position of power, I would not respect a butt kissing. Because tomorrow you are kissing one person's butt. The day after it will be another person's butt that you will be kissing. And a bad kisser that's in power, it never ends well for a country. In 2008, I spoke to a friend of Zimbabwe. And she warned me of what was coming. And I said, no, never, not in my beloved South Africa. Well, it happened. Why well, it did. And it is happening now. This country, with all the possibilities, just like the rest of my continent, with few pockets of excellence in between. I don't know what the hell is happening in my country. But it boils down to bad leadership. You know what a bad leader does? They ruin everything they touch. They break and destroy everything they touch. You know what bad leaders have done in Africa? Is create the perception that Africans cannot govern. That once you put a black man in charge, things will fall apart. That is one. That's the narrative of the world. That we will need a white person to govern, to lead, to direct us, to guide us. 
not because we are unable or inept or stupid or dumb or incompetent no because we have leaders who start out sucking up to people we have leaders with no backbone except a backbone that's held up by bribery and corruption and in the process they destroy this continent because then Africa is for sale to the highest bidder one bad leader just one can infect an entire country an entire region how can you a grown mature healthy thinking man get up on a stage and sing the praises of another man you know that is a red light right there and it's disgusting as well you are not buying any favors what you are buying is disrespect disgust and again the confirmation that you are not fit to be a leader and i hope they never vote you in power All of us have the ability and the opportunity to lead. But the question is, when that opportunity comes, are you willing to lead? Because to lead, it comes with responsibilities. It comes with a price to pay. But you know what? When you do the right thing, not according to what has been dictated by you, but according to your own convictions and your own principles, you just sleep better at night. What kind of a leader will you be if you have nothing to offer? If you have nothing to give? accept praises to another man you know africans the sensible african leaders are few and far in between it will be nice to live in a country where I am proud of my president. I am proud of what we have become as a nation. That would be beautiful. But you see a snake when the head is rotten. That rot filters down all the way down. Rotten leaders produce rotten countries. And that is what we have now in South Africa. This is a video about leadership. How it affects you and me. It's easy to say it's not my problem, but well, it is. It is your problem. This stinking government is our problem. Whether you voted for them or not, by default, they became our problem. And what is at the heart of it? Lack of leadership. And this is why it's so infuriating and disgusting to see an upstart singing the praises of another country in his own country. What about what your country has achieved so far? What was what were your contributions? 
instead of standing there and singing the praises of something else, that is the sickness of Africa. You, people like you, are the sickness of Africa. We need leaders, strong, capable, competent leaders. Not butt kisses, but independent thinkers. Who will voice their opinion, whether it's popular or not. Running for a country is not a popularity contest. It's about what you can offer. Talk about leadership. Our election is in 2024. For the first time, I have no idea who I'm going to vote for and if I'm going to vote. Because I don't think that it's worth it anymore. I honestly don't think so. And it's interesting. <laughs> Not too long ago, I was making radio programs. Encouraging people to vote. You know what? Think about, think back, after every election, what changed for you? What changed? Of all the leaders, leaders, I'm meaning that in a sarcastic way, in South Africa right now, political parties, which one inspire you enough to go and vote? Which one? Because you see the problem in South Africa, it's not unique to our country. This is the battle between countries. And we are caught in the middle. We are caught in a loop of bad leadership in South Africa. And if you think that looking towards a leader to come and save you is going to happen. It's not. You are on your own. You can pray to Jesus all your life. Jesus is not coming to save you. So what are we going to do? I know I keep on asking this question, but what are we going to do? People talk about war and guns and investment. But what they don't talk about are the citizens of the country. You know what bad leaders do? They keep on reminding you of how you must wait and rely on someone else to come and save you. You know what a brilliant leader does? is remind me you of the power that you have to change things where you are. Not on a grand scale, just where you are. That is what a good leader does. A good leader reminds you of what you are capable of, how competent you are, how you can overcome, how you can bold starting with nothing. We don't have that at the moment. Not of lead, not if an opposition leader sings the praises of another country. There's this interesting narrative between anti-Western, anti-Russia, anti-China, whatever you want to call this sentiment. It's all crap, if you ask me. It's all nonsense. You know why? At the end of the day, the decisions will be made by the people who are in government and who are in power right now. Whether you hate your neighbor for, for supporting Russia or China or America, it's irrelevant. You, we are the little people 
who do not fit into the bigger scope of things. We are just the decoys to keep ourselves distracted and occupied. While the leaders are messing up things. We must ask about policies, implementation. How is this affecting our country? What are the conditions of certain trade agreements? Do we get this information? No, we don't. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is that US is going to take all the trade out of the country. You know, stop with that rubbish narrative. Because they are American countries, American companies right now in South Africa, who are providing jobs to hard-working families. And do you think because of your sentiment and you being upset because America says South Africa sold guns to Russia? Do you think because of your in, you are indignant and so aggrieved and so upset, do you think that American company who that invested millions of rands in their companies to be here is going to pack up and go because you feel upset because South Africa is being accused of selling guns to Russia and we have a, a, a blustering leader who never says anything Mr. Ramaphosa never says anything to anyone and it's a, it's a frustration because we don't know what's going on in our own country because the communication from government is so bad and so poor. How did I come from someone sucking up in Zambia to China to our bad leadership in South Africa? It is linked because what connects them is this continent and the lack of leadership. The president of Zambia, Haka Hinde Michelema, he had to contest so many elections because he believed in his country. He believed in Zambia and to rebuild it and to contribute it. He fought election after election until he won with a 59% majority. Do you, do you realize the price we had to pay to become the president of Zambia? Do you understand what it costs to fight so hard for a dream because you have a vision for your country? And then some Bakisa comes and say, I, I honor without China, this would not have happened. No, it would have because we have all the resources. We have been so brainwashed that we need other countries to come and fix our things for us. That now it's even jumping to the next generation. Which is pathetic and it's sad. We have so much to offer. We must stop waiting on other people to do what, for us, what needs to be done. You know what I hate the ANC the most for? There are many things and many reasons why I hate them. I hate them for what they have done to this country. I hate them for cementing the perception that Africans cannot do anything. I hate them for their corruption for the inability to do the right thing. I hate them for covering up when lives were lost because of their corruption. We understand that you want to eat. We do. Because as Africans, we are very forgiving and we are tolerant. Even though we are being portrayed as savages and backwards because of people, like you.
I hate a weak leader. For trampling on the hopes and the dreams of the country. I despise a leader who takes money in exchange for his country. I hate a leader who can stand by and see how his country is being torn apart little by little, piece by piece, and not say anything about it. I despise and hate a leader who want to justify any form of injustice. I hate a leader who has the power to do the right thing and they don't do it. It is disgusting and despicable when you see someone wanting to be someone, something else and they think they have to suck up to get to that position. You are pathetic, you are small-minded and you do not deserve any recognition or any power. We, as Africans, deserve better. But until we wake up, and we realize that we are on our own. You are on your own. Things will not change. So we need to ask ourselves again, what are we going to do about it? If you take all countries out of the equation, forget about China, forget about Europe, Forget about Russia. Forget about USA. Let's look at ourselves and see how we conduct ourselves. How do we inspire? How do we motivate? How do we build? How do we come together? That should be our tool. Not pro-Russia or anti-China or pro-West. That's just rubbish. It's rhetoric. It's nonsense. What we should focus on is how we as Africans can rebuild our countries. How we can do better and do more. And if we can manage within our communities to take back our African pride, our African heritage, to take back the strength that comes naturally to us. Own it, live by it, and do it. Without our political leaders, but just us, uniting, supporting, and building. Then when you hear the rubbish that's going on in the world, then it won't affect you, because you stay focused on the country that you want to see you become part of that. And where does it start? With being a leader in your own life. Where you are and what you do. And when you do get the opportunity to rise, when you do get the opportunity to stand up and let your voice be heard, let it be for yourself what you are capable of, what you can contribute what you can do, what role you can play, and stop relying and singing the praises about another country or another man simply because that man is a means to an end to you. Think about that. You are not helpless. You are not stuck in poverty. You don't have to wait for government to come and help you. Leave government to the business of government. You need to live your life and improve it. 
regardless of what anyone says, no one has it easier than anyone else. It's just how you look at it. So how do you look at yourself and how do you look at your life? Or are you also one of the ones who sing the praises of the person who came to help you, who came to save you, without whose help, whose help, if they were not there, you don't know what would have happened. Stop being weak. Stop being pathetic. Step into your power. You are an African. Take pride in that. Take pride in who you are and where you come from. And go and look at the history of your ancestors and see where you come from and who and what you stand for. Our ancestors weep for us right now because we are so lost and so deaf to them. Let your ancestors be heard. Let them be seen and let them be remembered. And that is who you are. I thank you. I am Olivia and this is Prophets and Well News.